Hello and welcome to Young Scientist 1980. This is the third of our four heats in this year's competition and I think I can promise you a programme that's electric and illuminating because each of our projects this week has something to do with electricity and light. From Nottingham, we have a team of 17 and 18 year olds who've been devising cheaper ways of making solar cells which turn sunlight into electric power. Then there's an 11 year old boy from Derby who's fascinated by lights and lighting and two 17 year olds from Newcastle upon Tyne whose work on lighting keeps them rather further backstage than they are at the moment. Well now let's meet our judges. Blakemore from Oxford University and he's joined this week by Dr Mary Archer, lecturer in chemistry from the University of Cambridge who's a newcomer to young scientists and Ken Wallace from the Department of Engineering at Cambridge who like Colin Blakemore was with us last year. So first to Newcastle to the Royal Grammar School where when we were there Rehearsals were in full swing. Okay, let's start now, please. Bring up the lights. Oliver! Oliver, come here. Let me whisper to you. I'm not afraid. The papers are in a canvas bag, in a hole a little way up the chimney, in the top front room. Thank you. I want to talk to you, my dear. I want to talk to you. Outside. Outside. Say I want to speak. Press on. Press on. Softly. But not so slow. Faster. Faster. Parker, what on earth's going on? There's not supposed to be a blackout here. This is the theatre lighting control system that has been used in theatres since about 1920. Simply what it does is it introduces a varying resistance between the theatre light and its mains power supply. It is by varying these resistances that we gain control for the brightness of the light. Unfortunately, this means they are very difficult to operate and the spaghetti junction of wires that appears down here, it just becomes a lighting man's menace. We have decided to use a totally new principle for dimming the theatre lights. We are using the on-off principle which all computers use, enabling our system to be connected to a computer. Here, we have a small bulb being switched on and off very slowly. We can adjust the speed at which it flashes on and off by this knob here. And if I make the speed very, very fast, you can see there's the illusion that the bulb is permanently on. If, using this knob, I now adjust the proportion of time on to the proportion of time off, we can achieve a dimming effect like this. This is our computer system. The computer enables us to do many marvellous things with theatre lights, but problems do exist. In a computer, electronic signals are of very low voltages and are changing approximately once every millionth of a second, whereas stage lights take very high voltages at very high powers. Now, to overcome this problem, we built an electronic module which is housed inside this console. This is the silicon chip which converts the information given to the console from the computer into information which these individual electronic boards can understand. On each of these boards are two further electronic switches, the first of which operates 100 times a second, switching the light on and off. The second one simply provides the pulse required for main switching. The information which the computer gives to the electronics is dependent upon what keys I press on this keyboard. To start the evening's performance, I just follow the computer's instructions here, and you want to start, so we press letter S. And we will fade in the lights, and we'll fade them in slowly. And you can see what is happening with the lights on the screen here as they actually happen. And now, if you want to fade down the lights, we can press F for fade and fade down slowly, like this. One of the great advantages of our system is that all the information for the lights is stored on one of these cassette tapes. This enables the operator to merely press a button and let the computer do all the work and for me to sit back. However, 
Should the operator want to intervene at any point during the play, for instance, due to the fault of an actor, he can merely flip one of these switches and take control manually using these sliders here. Have you nothing else to ask him, sir? No other questions, no. But I hoped we could recall him to a sense of his position. Nothing will do that now, sir. You'd better leave him. Press on, press on. Softly, but not so slow. Faster. <laughs> they have no right to butcher me! Oh! Come, Oliver. Let's go home. Yes, sir. Home. Here are the Newcastle Grammar team, Graham Harker and Anthony McKay. Ken Wallace starts the questions. Graham, are there other computer-controlled lighting systems in operation? There are other compatible computer-controlled lighting systems available, but they achieve the same effect as our system using a completely different technique. They store their information digitally, uh, which unfortunately is expensive, and it means it's very inflexible. We've, very, we've made, made a design feature of our system um, the software possibilities. In other words, you can program any effect into the computer instead of having an ele electronic module which you'd have to plug in, say, to these systems that are compatible. Anthony, one feature of your system is that you control the intensity of light by varying the ratio of on and off and with a very fast yeah. flicker rate. Now, what are the principal advantages of that method over the more traditional one of, uh, of passing the uh, current through a variable resistance? Right. Well, as well as having greater control over the intensity of the light, there's um, a vast power saving because with the ordinary resistor dimming, dimming principle, the energy which doesn't go to the light is wasted in the form of heat. So the same energy is used all the time, i.e. full power. With our system, the energy used is related directly to the brightness of the bulb. So there is a, quite a dramatic, um, it's a far cheaper, in other words. Ah, oh, but the, the components you have to use are much more expensive, surely? Ah, well, I mean, that's very shortly overcome due to the running costs. Wouldn't it have been more sensible to make a completely dedicated system using a microprocessor to do everything that you use the computer to do now? It would be much cheaper in the long run, wouldn't it? Well, well I mean, if you could still program it, um, yes. But, you see, with the PET, we've got the flexibility of a display screen in front of the operator, which can give him all the um, necessary instructions so he doesn't need to know a thing about computers. Mm. Whereas with the dedicated system, the person would have to know about programming. Yes. Fading lights on and off is quite important in the theatre, isn't it? Uh, and I think your system allows for 32 levels mm. of yes. illumination, which is two to the fifth, and you have five That's channels. Right. Uh, would more levels have been useful, do you think? Well, the lights in this studio here are 64 levels, so it might be an idea if we incorporated um, another line somehow with the PET. Yes, it's always Because one more line would give mm. us 64 levels, mm. and I'm sure the lighting here is good. It, yes, you can see the steps, can't you, as, the, as it changes when it's Very, going. very slightly. In fact, our system isn't quite as linear as it could be at the moment, but we're working on it. But we're very much restricted at the moment by the actual computer output um, arrangement. In fact, we only have eight wires that we can work with, and at the moment it's easiest to have eight channels with 32 levels. Um, but could the existing system be developed to uh, run more lights? Oh, certainly, yes. As it stands at the moment, all you'd have to do simply is to um, plug in more boards. We may have a board for each light and change the... In, in, in fact, we could have 256 lights at 256 intensities, which is what we plan for. Right. Well, thank you very much, Graham and Anthony. Thank you.